What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Fudge Muppet. I'm Scott, We're here with Michael and Drew, and this is the Elder Scrolls podcast. And today we have a bit of an interesting one. We're talking about Elder Scrolls 6 again, a broad discussion about indulging the more uh, crazier ideas, I guess. Radical the, uh, Elder Scrolls radi- 6 ideas. Yeah, so we, we kind of want, like, you know, things that would basically, I guess, improve the game that might interfere or disrupt other things or might be sort of so different that people feel uncomfortable with it at first mention you know what i mean so so i guess a good thing to establish is that we're not like uh super attached to any of these ideas particularly yeah so it's spitballing um, in real time like they could be terrible ideas that we realize the second we say it but yes that's that's kind of the point Mm. is that we're just going to be very open-minded and think about anything i just went through my the obvious stuff yeah i just went through my steam library and thought about all of my favorite features from every game in my steam library i'm like how would that work in elder scrolls yeah, so, so just keep in mind that this isn't like some, these are the definitive ideas that we want in ESX. We just want to talk about some things and try and work with them. We're going to try and like indulge yeah. them and work with them instead of going, oh, no, no way, you know? So yeah. d- does anyone have anywhere in particular they would uh, like to start or some kind of... I mean, the first thing I thought was, what are some cool things about Fallout, since that's another Bethesda IP, that could potentially work in mm. Elder Scrolls. And the first thing I thought of was Vats. <laughs> okay. So All right. My biggest, He's kicking us off. The, the, hard, <laughs> the biggest trouble I've, I've had with Elder Scrolls <laughs> is trying to think about how to make the combat system good. Like, uh-huh. combat is difficult to do because if you make the combat fun, then generally it's going to be skill-based, like your skill as the player. But with mm. an RPG like the Elder Scrolls, you don't want to go too heavy on player skill because you want to emphasize character skill. And I feel like Fallout's way of dealing with that was VATS. And I'm sure Mm. you could conjure up some lore way to have a VATS-like thing, like maybe it's to do with alteration magic or something, in The Elder Scrolls, where you get to see cool finishes if you choose to do that instead of real time. So two things, like clearly we're not obviously, like you said, it's not literally like VATS, it'll be some kind of thing. And there could be mechanics to work around it. One thing I do want to actually say, which which is, I think is a, interesting idea is um the whole limb system and limb damage and having breaking up those different parts so you can have you know damaged Literally. legs damage what yeah. all yeah all that kind <laughs> of stuff um that i think that's that could be uh good to implement mm. in but i don't like this the vat but then how time. do you feel it it does feel a bit funny from a um just a vibe perspective to have things like bandages or doctor's it's bags like, um, or like a medical kit. You know I, the guy in Men in Black yeah. whose head grows back slowly? It's basically <laughs> like that. Well, I see. I mean, we could... Okay, we can like... Let's just let's just talk about that part first because that's the easier part to like talk about than the like sort of slow time or stop time kind of function of, of that. You reckon I had plenty to say about slow time? Yeah, well, we, we can get to it, but it's also making that a universal feature somewhat can like... What if to just mini dragon? What if to just that to you just can do in, interject? All right. What, what if? And wow, Drew, you've really started us off with something. I didn't expect <laughs> that at all. <laughs> that. Um, what if it was like a perk? Like I know quick reflex is or is already mm. a perk name, but there was some kind of like perk, or perhaps it's a vampire trait to kind of represent their supernatural reflexes or abilities and things like that, or their high perception level. To kind of just target body parts and then, you know, let it rip with whatever attacks you like. And it's not a that's thing per se. It's just, obviously, there's no tech. It's just, I'm extremely perceptive. So much so uh, that this is like, like, an, in, like ha- an insect flying around. How do you, your ha- hand to them is like slow-mo in terms of how fast they can react. But how do you balance that over... Like, how would that not make, like, vampires or whatever those perks just the ultimate thing? If, for example, it's just like, oh, attack percent chance or whatever, and then it was just like... In the same way, it's not in Fallout. Fallout. Like, in Fallout, Vats isn't, like, necess... I mean, you can obviously but- make a super overpowered Vats build, but you can also play super overpowered builds that don't use it at all. Yeah, you can, but Vats is a massive advantage over the top of the rest. Like, mo- like for most... Yeah, I mean, it just stuff, depends but- on the build, like, and especially if attributes were there and there's some agility AP system... Um, that look, 
I'm just trying to run with it. If yeah. it were me, there wouldn't be that. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, from a law but perspective, a, you could we're indulging be like it. Akatoshi's... Because you're, you're most likely going to be a, a super-powered but that's character. Even, uh, <laughs> you can break yeah. the Time dragon. Bend yeah, you can Time break the dragon. But then, then that's the problem. That's what I kind of mean. I feel like even Vats as a system is something that's special about the person and that you own a pit boy So you've got this virtual assisted target yeah, system. We're just trying to work around yeah. it. Anyway, let's... Let's well, move off that meme and just like, yeah, like you were saying about limbs in general. Well, because like obviously, that. so I, I've been like, I, uh, like for the last couple of months, um, I've been really playing a game called Kenshi, which I really like, right? And it, it was sort of like a, it's it's kind of like this big open world kind of um, game. The combat's kind of like Knights of the Old Republic. But anyway, it's, it's this RPG, but it's one of those sort of like you just plopped in the world with all of these either, you know, several different beginnings. Um, and you can kind of just do whatever you want, whatever goal you want to do. So it's that kind of game. So we'll establish that first. But you can even lose um, limbs entirely, right? And you, so limb damage, because it follows like limb damage, blood damage, all that kind of stuff. And there's, you know, all the bandages, medical stuff, all that kind of things. But you can actually lose the limbs. But because it is a sort of sci-fi, post-apocalyptic kind of vibe thing, you can get robotic limbs to, to replace them and stuff like that. Mm. So it kind of can work in that. But the point that... I think one advantage that Kenshi really has is that when it makes you basically eat shit, you know, when you when you get screwed up and you get like mauled by these beasts and so on, you're left bleeding and you're crawling and so on, and then you get another one of the guys to come and help you or something, it kind of helps create narrative. So when it uses like your body damage almost, it, it kind of creates your own like developed narrative. Mm. So if you, it's kind of like the same premise that you, you know, you take your cool character and then yeah, our character loses an eye and they've got an eye patch and you're like, oh, well, this is my badass veteran character who's now level 40 and at this point. Yeah. Now that's obviously a crate, like the, the biggest problem there is that you don't have any sort of alternative replacement in the Elder Scrolls. What if you just go to a mage and they just like focus in a chapel and they focus really hard and like your limb starts like growing out. I feel yeah. like you could, just comes back to life. you could justify these things though, like an enchanted something that you could write into, like weirder things have been written into the lore yeah. than magic process. Like some like steampunk Dwemer looking thing yeah. or like, or like, you know, or limbs made of other materials and chants and stuff. The only problem I'd say with that is just like, if that became accessible enough, like why wouldn't the rest of the world use it? Yeah. And then everyone's got these like pseudo, like what, for example, if you can make an arm, like an arm out of some kind of material with magic and then it functions, you know, well and everything, like why can't they, you know, make cranes out of that? And, all and these... then we chuck in skins and we have Daedric prosthetic arms mm. and ebony. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm going to say this, this, I, this whole idea is very, um, that's space. Cake. It's, it is. It is. Yeah. It is. It's kind of. I, like, I think. But oh, no, the God. only reason. So I was saying the only reason I was going as far to the Kenshi thing is just to point out that damage does. It, it can like help create a story. A, a, you know, yeah, story. But so, but connecting it to the Vats thing, the whole idea of crippled limb damage, and if there were some kind of effects, like another example of damage is um is fable when you when you because fable has a system where you basically you know if you get downed or so and you get back you, you don't really die but you get back up but i, I guess at least a fable too but you get scars and scars build up over time and you can actually earn them and so on mm -hmm. but just i guess the whole concept as a whole is like damage as like a as a character growth sort of and you get yeah, nicknames I, I, and stuff i get mm. the concept i just don't really see how it would be executed really well in an elder scrolls game i think in a on a more simple note what you obviously probably should have is a system where limb damage is kind of real just in the sense that like if i shoot a bandit in the leg he'll start limping yeah um or if you know if it's a high damage shot into his leg he'll start limping towards me and his um speed will be slowed down or if you shoot a warrior in the arm perhaps they're sword swinging speed shoots down you know if it's high damage or not uh, again i don't really like need all these things i'm just i wouldn't be surprised if work. they do that too like yeah like, like or, or like you're saying sorry about cutting off limbs not it happening to you mm -hmm. i don't think at all but definitely you know two enemies in combat or as finishes instead of just you unlock decapitate why don't you have things like in you know witcher or lots of games where you you know cut an arm off during a finisher move or mm. cut a torso in two. And the idea of it happening to enemies, but not to you, I was going to say it kind of links to the idea you talked about recently, Michael, of the stealing essentially the nemesis system from from the mm. Lord of the Rings games. Yeah. Um, because like you know, like those same things you were talking about with Kenshi, where you know it adds character to your 
to your character if you lose a limb or lose an eye or something that can mm-hmm. be quite easily what well, not easily but you know mm-hmm. can be applied to like bandit leaders and stuff like that yeah i think a, a good thing to say um for those who haven't watched that uh elder scroll 6 video i did that talked about the nemesis system is that obviously we wouldn't want to replace all enemies with just a big randomized thing like it wouldn't be at the forefront of the enemy system in the same way it is in the middle earth games but instead it would be a great thing to replace all of those enemies who are just going to be generic right so i still want all the set pieces and things like that but in those places like valheim towers where it's, they're all just called bandit and their leader is just called bandit chief you can have them be individual and actually react to you and have all the different generic enemy groups so we're talking necromancers bandits perhaps a different type of marauder and like multiple bandit type clans with kind of unique personalities in the same way in new vegas you have different crime gangs with you know different aesthetics and vibes and kind of morals you could have that in an elder scroll system there's vampire clans all that stuff and they could even fight over locations right Mm. so you kill one and then another one moves in and i think that's realistic and better than having them all just be generic. One thing too, I, I think we should kind of say, and I'm sure you two would ag- agree, but just personally, when I sort of like assess any of these ideas, I was often thinking about how it plays into the role-playing part of things. And if you look at Bethesda's game design and what some people kind of get more annoyed with in the more recent iterations is it goes much more towards a uh, tailored storytelling. And obviously there's really good components to tailored storytelling and so on, but they it a lot of the time the trade-off is the things that make people actually fall in love with the game, which is often when people start even just doing the order of quests or going here or going there, people create their own sort of personal stories. So when you have systems like, and that's why I think why Shadow of War and all that have become such cult classics because people really enjoy like, oh, I had this enemy that, you know, I, he got a scar then and then later he came back to fight me and all those kinds of similar principles. But it's the same way I was kind of like for, like there's some cool mods in, in Skyrim that you can just, it's named enemies and like yeah you can argue that like oh you wouldn't know the name of every bandit and that's fine the same way you wouldn't know the name of every npc before talking to them anyway it does actually increase your experience if you like oh i fought the giant this name here an early level or something and then it kind of creates Mm. a, a story for you it adds more like characters into the story and really like you know that bandit leader that you might kill might just be completely random or generated or so on but it gives you a sense of like oh this was my personal Mm. kind of story and i think that's what a lot of people really attach to anyway in the elder scrolls games and these big open world exploring um sandboxes is their sort of path and story and so on and also how you know it develops their character and so on as well and it's cool for sharing because you get to tell your friends what you Mm. did and so on i think bounty hunting systems being overhauled would be really cool with that like i can imagine you go and hunt down some um bandit leader and he basically cuts a deal with you to let him go and he gives you more money than you would have been paid. Mm. And then later he could even, or out of mercy, you let him go with less cash. Like it just depends. He, could, mm. he, he might say something about, oh, you know, friends like me are useful to have. Something vague like that. He runs away. Later you go to attack a bandit fort that's full of bandits that are like an opposing faction to his. And he shows up with a group of um, men to take it over. And then they're kind of chilling there and they're not attacking you. Yeah. You know, maybe you come back and they are hostile later for whatever reason, but... And it's probably worth noting too, is that Bethesda does like this sort of dynamic radiant kind of system that they've tried to do in part. Like in Skyrim, I remember Mm. it was a deal that like, you know, the prices of currency are of like certain things. If you sell lots of iron daggers to one area, they will change the price of it and and so on. And, and, you know, they they attempted their sort of radiant quest systems and so on and they're often they're just usually poor quests at the mm. moment but i feel like in the future if they, if they do do these kinds of things better yeah. that, that like all of these dynamic systems um can potentially help the whole sandbox experience a lot yeah and, and just to just to reiterate as well we don't we wouldn't want it to take over the game we still want heaps of set piece locations with unique enemy names unique stories to that location mm. i just think it's the perfect thing or just a really good option to replace all those places that you know will not have a story mm. or will not have a unique named enemy inside. Yeah. And obviously it won't be exactly like Middle Earth where... Because look, enemies don't often escape from you yeah. in Elder Scrolls games. But if they did, imagine you burnt one really, really bad with fire damage, but then had to run off and flee. And next time you meet him, 
he actually has a changed name, like um, Varan the, the Feared before becomes Varan the Charred. And he pulls out like a, a Daedric enchanted axe that he didn't have before and says mm. something like, oh, um, since you like fire so much, I thought you'd love this and starts trying to kill you with it. You yeah. know, all, all those kinds of dynamic things would be really cool. Hard to pull off. And you don't necess- you're not going to have necessarily the same intricacy that it has in the Middle Earth games, but still, it's like a it's a nice concept to play with at least. Mm. So there's an idea I I was thinking about that kind of adds from this, but it's it's fairly radical and it's kind of a JRPG okay. element. <laughs> but um, <laughs> to preface, it's like it is in um, I always forget which one's the latest one, but Shadow of War. I remember it most. Like the earliest memory I have of it was actually from Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, but then Metal Gear Solid does it a lot, where you almost have a Pokemon element to the game where foes can be recruited to your own gang, essentially. Like, mm. so this kind of ties into another crazy thing, which is how I actually think settlement building could be good, but we'll get there later. <laughs> but like the idea of having kind of like, did you guys play Metal Gear Solid 5? No. no. Right, so, so you have a base. And it, it's like Metal Gear Solid's ridiculous, but when if there's a, a skilled enemy on a mission you're doing, instead of killing them, you can choose to essentially airlift them out to your base mm. where you, they get indoctrinated and become a servant to you. Right. And this is something in, a, in Brotherhood, but I'm pretty sure it's in all of these games where you can actually send them out on missions or whatnot, and then they their stats increase, etc., etc., and then... You know, I was even thinking that in uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, you kind of have these battles between, you know, um, like your faction and the other faction where you could potentially have like a ground war between your band or your gang and a rival one from one of these unnamed locations that wouldn't really have a story. And I almost imagine it like Pokemon where, you know how when you battle in Pokemon, this tiny little space becomes a field? Mm. Does that make sense? Like, I'm getting a bit ridiculous here, but essentially you have these battles and then you take a settlement and it's kind of under your control now, essentially. And you recruit this gang. The the concept's interesting. I don't know if I would have, like, the full Pokemon set up, like the area expands. Yeah, well, like, that's just an an aesthetic thing. But, you know, like a a turf war between you and rival factions. Yeah, no, it could be cool to just do it, I think, in the actual game. Like, I can imagine it if i was to run with this idea fitting in high rock pretty well obviously and the whole like you know find a hill and become Mm. a king type attitude if it was some super war-torn um province you know at the time that you're playing like extra war-torn and you can actually join or lead a a kingdom or, or a group of knights or something like that and actually kind of like take over places and then have a recruiting feature if you desire or maybe you just meet people while doing quests and you can see that perhaps this person would be like they could be set piece people like oh this person they don't look extremely sold on their king's cause perhaps if i do some quest or help them i can actually get them to switch sides or sympathize with us um and then they will actually be on your side in an upcoming siege or something like that Mm. yeah it's 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 all very yeah it's 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 kind of hard because some of these things like obviously can shift the whole like you know vibe of the entire in the entire game because i know i know like it's not exact it's not the exact same like obviously being able to recruit people and so on and if you had like an actual management system but kind of like uh, maybe another good example to look kind of look at is um mountain blade um banner lord or this banner lord 2 the most recent one um because it's funnily enough it, you increase skills and stuff um by doing and everything in that as well and you basically you know you create your kind of character but then it goes you know and you you basically recruit armies and so on and you can go and attack forts or you can serve under different leisures and and, and stuff like that but like obviously like the focus of that is so not like one person ex- exploring and stuff like that and i Mm. It's, it's kind of hard to see like one, one thing you could consider too is like I agree like settlement building is probably going to be part of it right but you can imagine I wonder too how they're going to do with um, like a companion system or something if they do implement it and so on and especially for example if they did have a settlement system I would want a much better like settlement slash character management of that settlement versus like I remember Fallout 4s would often be kind of frustrating because you kind of like kind of mm. manually moving around or assigned to this and sometimes they would just leave and not do the thing or, or whatever uh, and yeah. 
I kind of don't want it, to be honest. Like, well, at least what I want is this, because we all know the problem with Fallout 4 that happened with settlements, right? Like, the fact that it took over the map to such an extent mm. that there weren't as many set-piece locations that are unique with unique characters, with unique quests, than there could have been. So, I would very much hope that if it is put into Elder Scrolls 6, and this may sound counterintuitive, but it's almost like design the game as if settlement building is not in it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in the same mm -hmm. way Skyrim was made, then find yeah. places to fit zones that you can build in. Um, and then, you know, I probably, I mean, I don't really mind. I, I didn't particularly love settlement building. So there's a disclaimer from me, like even just the actual act of doing it. I would rather it be more like a very expanded hearth fire where there's a lot of customization in kind of a, what you're building but it's not like um customizing every staircase every wall where it's facing mm. especially when you consider to this whole idea from fallout which is where it became a big scrapathon um and materials were needed and i think that would be a very bad thing to happen in an older scrolls game um very much so i would prefer it definitely to just be like a pay for pay for a thing so or pay for the materials and just press a button and it pops into place i don't want the whole let's scrap this daedric sword and harvest these three materials from it and then so yeah. I, I as as a kid like I, I was actually big on um sims 2 and sims 3 and, and i played there a lot so i actually quite like like managing this area but i kind of agree like i do prefer i i don't like material collection and gathering and stuff like i didn't even like it's that not the purpose where you of the go game. and because it yeah and and it's it's not it and also well like in fallout 4's case it over um it made it like looting just became like a forced kind of chore like oh i need to get this and this this and this and like you're just constantly picking up junk and to be fair that even so, sorry to interrupt but even though i agree that it became a chore that's even in a game where it's meant to fit the theme like post-apocalyptic yeah. like oh i'm building things from scraps that's that's in the vibe and it I mean, the yeah. easy way to do it is also, it's like, if people did want to engage with it, like, oh, you can go and chop the wood and get it, or you can go and, like, you know, mine and get it, or you can hire, you know, your steward or whatever, you can talk to them, and you just pay a fee, and then they'll do it. Maybe it's mm -hmm. more, costs more, but whatever. Yeah. Like, I, I'd cop that every time over having yeah, to yeah. sit there and mine. But I, I kind of agree in the way that I, I like the, the system of, it's not, because settlements also kind of like, like the way I would like to see it is basically if you're able to become some sort of noble, you're able to get land and you're about able to have like, you know, people working your land and on your land and you're able to like, you know, build your little keep and castle and, and stuff like that. And perhaps you even... You know, you could even take that further and go like, oh, perhaps you can have your own like order of knights or something because maybe you're not a noble and maybe you want to start like a, a religious faction. Maybe you want to start like Vigilance <laughs> of Stendar kind of vibe. And then you're like, oh, this is a, vi a vigilant, you're, you know, the vigilant headquarters. Like imagine you can build your like base and it's your own headquarters. I still think there should be probably to make it work the smoothest, like pre determined locations, but obviously yeah. a lot more but, than just the three and a half five. Yeah, of course, of course. But again, it's almost like I said, don't even predetermine them when you're building the game. Find spots for them after. Mm. So that it, I want the game to feel like you could play it without touching that and everything would feel just as unique and special as any other Elder Scrolls game. Because you could make it a very non-invasive <laughs> mechanic. Like obviously yeah. when I brought up a lot of this stuff, it kind of, it can quite easily become the most fundamental thing. But as we've gotten into with like the High Rock aesthetic, say you've got this you know, you have the option to side with a certain king and within their kingdom, you can set up your own, you know, your own lordship and you've got, you know, maybe when you return to your keep, you've you've picked a banner or a name for your clan, whatever you want to do, you can manage your estate. You know, you can, you can like, it's almost like a mini game where you don't physically do anything, but send off your, your knights to, to do da 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 and they level up their skills. They're more capable of protecting your land so that when you venture away from it, it's kind of like a player home in Skyrim where you kind of forget about it until you go back, but there's much more interactivity to your settlement. And that can tie that can tie in well too, the the sending people off and training them tie better into like a companion management system anyway. Mm -hmm. Like which I I really think they should just buy it the bullet and do it. Like I think people enjoy companions rather than none. And like companions in Skyrim are pretty lackluster, but in Fallout 4, like everyone really, really enjoyed the um companions and obviously in new vegas and other and other games um mm. i think it should kind of move in that d direction that they should have 
you know, even if it is sort of like, you know, Outer Worlds kind of style where you, you really do, like, you have a lot of say, you can pick their perks and you can, and stuff like that. Or if it's part of the sort of settlement management system, you can kind of like, you know, if they if you send them back to your settlement, you can send them off on some kind of mission, like a list of missions or something like that, might which might increase certain skills or so on and bring it back if you're trying to build them in a certain way or i guess anything's better than the pack meal system we saw in skyrim i guess the general gist of it is just reducing the number of companions and massively enhancing the quality of yeah. those companions i mean you know there's no reason why they couldn't just keep some bland mercenary type pay 500 gold companions around the place who kind of are more like skyrim or they have you know a little line about backstory in that mm. but i just think having that cast of maybe 10 companions who are all really really good mm. um would would work really well and like you can you should have as i've talked about before a strong companion management system where you can almost tell them you know play defensive not play act yeah fight offensive fight defensive or if they're a mage you know act like a support role so they'll cast healing spells or some kind of rally spells on you as you fight and all those things or, you know, attack on sight or don't attack on sight until I attack. And it's the same as like, I, I think companions are great from a role playing perspective and especially if you want to be like, for example, if you wanted to be some kind of like Merlin um, studious sort of wizard character, but you don't want to mm. engage in combat a lot you, or, you know, you're playing a healer role or something like that. Or even if you just want to be like, I'm a lone warrior with my dog, he's like my pet dog and I want that kind of vibe. It, it increases the role playing and the feel of everything. I think you uh, even the New Vegas sort of style where you have like, you can have a companion and then you can have like a non-humanoid, like smaller companion because there's mm plenty of things and i mean look we already deal with like summons and stuff in it like scamps and or or, or atronarchs or, or whatever so you i don't I, I feel like that would be that would probably enhance conjuration too if it actually gave you more um control over your your summons mm. and the way they work as well yeah all right well i have another radical idea okay. if you'd like to move on sure i don't know it's it's not going to be radical to, to you two, but it might be radical to some of the people listening. Um, as we know, Elder Scrolls games have a level by doing system. So you do an action, you use a skill, and you get better at it. And then in the case of Skyrim, you could pick perks from that based on your skill level that you've acquired in an immersive way, mm. right? What if Elder Scrolls had a Fallout leveling system where you actually level your skills by allocating skill points each time you level up which also allows you to a perhaps not force uh certain skill activities that don't make sense or you have to grind up um and yeah i mean you get what so i'm saying I, right like the fallout yeah, leveling system yeah. we actually like it i also like level by doing um for elder scrolls i would not want level by doing in fallout um but Let's just pose this idea, so, so, fallout leveling system. So I think like the, the, the big the big thing there is like, obviously there, there is an immersive sort of element to level by doing that people enjoy and so on. But yeah, it's cool. the one, and you know, it can lead to grindy activity. And there is that one thing, for example, in Fallout where there are skills like science, which you might not be interacting with on a daily basis. Like the only way you could really theorize, like, the, the reality is you're reading textbooks and you're just sitting there and like learning or so on. And obviously they don't want to bake that into a level by doing gameplay system. So there's, it allows Fallout to have a lot of other skills that can be increased, which, you know, um, so it's like, oh, you got more, you know, scientific knowledge by learning, but you can't really f factor that into the gameplay. And there's lots of skills that might not mm -hmm. come up as much in the gameplay. So that's and why I, like, and I disagree. And I disagree with the, eye because a lot of people hear people like, you know, you, that opinion and they say, oh, you could make science like level by doing, just add these other applications. I just think it gets complicated. I think it's mm. much better in Fallout, like you're saying, to have these skills that just like survival. I don't want to sit there and, I don't know, cook meat to level up survival. It's And it's kind of cool too, to be able to begin the game. And if you want to, even like for a role playing perspective, I want to be a survival master. So in three levels, I'll be level three. I just allocated it all these points into survival mm. so you know i may be under leveled at that level in all other skills but man do i know survival for example you yeah. know it allows you to specialize in a way that kind of helps role playing and if anything um specialize in a way that gets you quicker to a point that can make sense with a larger variety of backstories like if you want to role play that you've always been like a really skilled knight mm. 
you can quickly, like say by like a few levels in, have a pretty damn respectable one-handed skill. You yeah, know, if you want to. I agree. The I like the um, the concept. But I, I, you could make the argument, I guess, that with any sort of like class system or like bonus sort of stuff that you could get a similar effect of like, you know, your backstory of a knight or something like yeah, you pick, pick pick the race and, and the class and the maybe the traits or whatever that basically give you the max skill. Because the only thing I'd say, I guess, like, so I, I if pretty much any game, I would, I kind of generally prefer the, the like sort of Fallout style system. But it's such a like cornerstone of like Elder Scrolls thing. Like obviously we're we're indulging this idea. We yeah, don't exactly. actually we don't actually want to I want level by doing for Elder Scrolls the, still. The one thing I would say though is that I think for the most part, most of Skyrim's or at least Skyrim skills don't need um, they, they're, they're kind of you You will if you're playing a mage you'll kind of end up using the magic or, or like they all sort of play a mm. role whereas you have like things that fall out there are skills that you know like speech for example like there's only so well, many here, speech opportunities that you're not going to be able to great well speech craft I was, I was yeah. about to say speech is actually one in Elder Scrolls that would benefit for because, sure because yeah, but that's the thing you wouldn't want to overhaul the whole system just to make speech seem a bit better yeah, because i think because like, the, the mini games in oblivion had massive faults and in skyrim they kind of uh, merged speechcraft with it basically became a barter tree mm -hmm. that you leveled by selling things and then occasionally had chances to use that dialogue but i mean we've talked about the problems with speech before in a video on the channel and the way it was structured even then was poor like there weren't that many opportunities or by the time you would get say 75 in the speech skill like you've missed opportunities where they could be used or they're just mm. not that useful like all kinds of things like that so one thing about being able to be very <clears throat> particular about where your skills go is it can kind of tie into having more serious um ramifica like not ramifications in a negative sense but ramifications for what you do choose like a different radical idea i was just thinking about was how in fable your character kind of grows to reflect who you are so you mm. can physically change so if, if you've got a level by doing system and you know you just you're just fighting because you know it's elder scrolls you're going to be fighting enemies you if you want to be a fairly slim character who's not gigantic and muscular, it's like, well, you wouldn't want your body to change based on what you do because sometimes you can't help but do these things. Whereas if you can be particular about where you level, say you level heavily into like um, blocking or hand-to-hand -hand combat, maybe, you, maybe you're larger and you've got stronger muscles, but then perhaps that means you wouldn't be quite so good at sneaking. Um, whereas, you know, ma mm. maybe you could have more serious divergences based on what you choose to spec in. See, this is something too that I think could be easily fixed. No, well, not easily fixed, but, um, but what would help there is attributes, return of attributes outside of skills. Because people don't want to be, oh, cause, because attributes have always been like a, a point add, like you sort of have control over the direction. Somewhat, like you get different uh, modifiers and bonuses depending on the skills you gained in that, like different, in the difference mm. between level two and three or whatever. But, if you got like, you know, stronger or more agile and that changed your body shape, kind of like Fable style, I feel like that would be cool because you do have direction over it. Whereas with skills, like, like I mean, Fable did it kind of like a bit, a bit crazy sometimes because I remember um, if you, your, I think, I think it was agility, whatever, there was the range, you know, if you're using guns and stuff, you became taller, <laughs> you grew taller. So you were just like, there's like funny effects mm -hmm. to it. I do like, because I, I mean, I guess in general, if we want to talk about that, I do like the concept. The, the level by doing is is cool because it's immersive and in a similar way as we were talking about like scars or something earlier or the ability to physically see your character grow or whatnot like, is a cool... It's a cool mm. visual feedback because then you really get to look at your character. If you go back to a save at you at level 10 and he's like scrawny and stuff by comparison to you who was like, you know a living warrior god kind of vibe at level 50 it feels like it gives you more increments in your story makes you otherwise feel otherwise you just have gear is your only way to show any progression well, and that's what we artificially do in builds anyway we deliberately kind of create ourselves like role playing character arcs even in the absence of systems that are there like we're not saying that oh at this stage yeah. you should change your your outfit or whatever like cuz i like it's really simple and i mean this is the most simple thing we should just have a haircut system or something like that or like something in there like just to visually change dynamic growth from yeah. future 
I'm all yeah. for that. I, I, that, that. That stuff's that stuff's fine. And uh, I think the well, sorry, tiny little thing is I yeah, like yeah. the idea of a hairdress haircut and like tattoo and stuff because it could cause you to interact with more houses or characters or different people that you wouldn't mm-hmm. otherwise normally. Because that's yeah. what a lot of those, like, what seem like menial tasks, like even having to sleep to level up. But when in Oblivion, I remember so many more taverns because I went to sleep in them all the time because I had to versus mm-hmm. um, other, like other games of Skyrim where it's like you can literally never sleep in a tavern. You just never yeah. have to. It, it could have been like a, just a childhood thing, like way more curiosity. But I know that in Oblivion, I just went into way more houses than I did in yeah. skyrim mm. probably because as a kid you're not really aware of how games are built so you're thinking like what if there's a unique treasure in so-and-so's house in bruma and it's like there's not and mm. you know there's not when you're playing skyrim you know it will just be another generic house with a bed in the bottom and and you know not all that much stuff you still explore it but the i guess the urgency compared to when i was younger isn't just just not there but anyway back to the idea of your character changing I don't mind it as far as like the small things go, like, you know, beard growth, hair growth, things like that. But I suppose when you start getting into like the physique changing things to a drastic extent and like aging and things like that, you really have to consider the time scale of the game. And it becomes a bit silly if, you know, in game last week you were scrawny and then this week you're massive and you're just like running mm. around and like all the political events and timeline stuff would all be like static or just there as the game set but what you got 10 years older like i would prefer not to age I th- i'd prefer I think- to set the age just because i think it's too complicated to have the game world massively like fl- like fly past you in terms of years and timeline i can agree with the age things but i think in terms of like muscle development or stuff like that i'd be willing you to can sus- have a bit i'd be willing to suspend disbelief for like that thing because you're not it's not going to actively like like instead of like being old wouldn't makes sense if only like you know a month in games passed whereas Mm -hmm. but i guess i guess sorry my point there is more like as well with the muscle growth stuff you can have it but a little goes a long way like Mm -hmm. uh, because i think a lot of people think of it very cartoony like i'm gonna start off scrawny and then i'm gonna look like ronnie coleman when i have Mm. you know 80 and one-handed you can pick your muscle thing at the start perhaps and even look big and strong and and not necessarily be like because i want a lot of full body customization i just want every character to be able to look even npcs a certain way without necessarily needing skills or attributes to back that just for a pure character display perspective but um i i just think it's still worth it if your muscly character gets you know a bit more ripped or a bit more like more detailed in certain aspects so you can look at them go oh actually i I look i look stronger but it's not like because i just grew boulder shoulders out of nowhere from being I, nothing i genuinely i generally agree because i like like for example like sometimes you do want some like twink kind of like assassin character right but you might but be level like one b- but they level one-handed yeah. and they and a high strength beneficial to their character still but then you'd end up then you know everyone's like you know ronnie coleman some kind of bodybuilder running around exactly. as a sneaky assassin or sometimes you want that lithe kind of rogue kind of character or but you can start as that and then just develop <clears throat> some more definition and like you mm. know more powerful looking forearms like you know the difference as well between size and just what you think of when i say powerful physique or athletic physique mm. Like obviously they're all. They but all at, the, at the end of the day, I, I don't think I don't think the other thing I would say is, outside of like say for example if it's strength, so for like muscle change, like what are you gonna do for intelligence? Like veins on your head and your like brain gets bigger <laughs> and you're like oh, <laughs> some mega mind level thing. <laughs> your your beard goes long and curly. But that's it's kind of like what are you gonna what are you gonna do for that? Even agility, it's like well, you, you could wouldn't. maybe say maybe more ripped or something. But it, a lot it's of because them- people take it too far. It's the same way they do it with morality, like um. Like when you look in Fable, when you like get evil and you look a bit more aged and horny, but see, that, or in Mass Effect, where you start getting I, like in um, Mass Effect, the you look like a planet that's about to explode. See, I like I, all the red lines. I really there. like it in in like things like the Knights of the Old Republic games and the the Fable games because makes it, more sense because it baked into the law in, exactly. in Star Wars. It's yeah. because the evil is a corrupting factor. Like in Fable, in the universe where you literally will grow demon horns that's really yeah, cool yeah. but it's very specific to that like yeah. when you have the sort of gray moralities of, of a lot of um the elder scrolls world and so on it doesn't which i like more yeah. as well because because yeah. otherwise you start 
you know, casting a a set moral lens on everything. Like, oh, this NPC in the city has horns. He must have done yeah, bad it, it, things. It's the like, equivalent of like if you were to do a Stormcloaks versus Imperials and if you join the Stormcloaks, it's like bad <laughs> karma or something. And then you're like, oh, but I'm playing, you know what I mean? Like, it, I know. I, I even didn't like as much as I can enjoy aspects of it in New Vegas. There are also massive aspects I don't like. Hmm. Like uh, as much as like, um, I don't know. Obviously, I guess... Yeah, it's hard to argue that factions like Caesar's Legion are good. Mm. But, like, if you wanted to ideologically join them for whatever reasons that you're role-playing or join a gang or something, I, don't think I, to- wouldn't, I wouldn't want it to affect your character. Like, I think- the way that you look, whether or not it's evil or not evil. I, I like more of a just pure reputation systems. Or, like they, they have sh- shown in Elder Scrolls, have the gods decide a bit perhaps you know if you have done quote evil things maybe some adra won't let you pray at their shrine like Mm. stuff like that they can decide but yeah definitely not a huge fan of like karma point systems even on that like evil um the evil faction the point about caesar's legion and stuff too it's just like you can have like like in quote like good people born on the wrong side of things and so on and like characters in it so it's kind of like and you know if that's all you know and that's all you've been indoctrinated to like mm. it's- i think people people forget um and, and it obviously doesn't justify anything but people forget just a basic role-playing environment that so many characters in a game world uh, or a real world and throughout history they are products of their environment mm. um i think that's easy to forget yeah absolutely but yeah i, I anyway to, to bring it back i agree about the, 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 the i think overall i think we've sort of rationalized ourselves out of the dynamic changes to your <laughs> physical appearance yeah. because of reasons the one thing i guess because even like because arguably though i guess even if you got say scars from like a s- severe fight or something you got really like low mm. health or something like that and you survived you could keep them but then also it's like you know you can hand wave it away with a face sculptor if you really wanted to get rid of them but I it feel also like depends it would... on your your build too. Like it would annoy me if I was trying to play some. Because look, let's let's face it, you can't avoid taking damage mm-hmm. in the Elder Scrolls. It is very much like a you kill people and there's enemies to fight and slay and you whatever. So it would annoy me to be playing a character who is meant to look like. Say you make some beautiful female mage and she's meant to look extremely elegant and she goes around with a knight who's like a support role or whatever what are you laughing at Drew? oh i know where you're going with it so. <laughs> yeah and yeah. then she and then you have one battle and because you're a high magic or low hp character your hp gets low mm-hmm. you're constantly healing all the time but then you go and see your character and you just covered in scars because you're always getting smashed down to low hp you know what i mean yeah, like it's like just gets somebody like... hits you with an axe and now you're like jaws hanging off and <laughs> you know that's your character or even <laughs> or yeah or even you get hit by a fireball and then you get covered in burn scars mm. and it just gets complicated mm. i guess is my is my point but i mean this is the video to uh discuss all ideas the one so the the one dynamic thing i'm a hundred percent behind is hair yeah, growth. yeah that's because funny. even when people say like you can when you cut it you can take any style and it will grow longer and longer and longer but in those proportions or not so you can change your style without having to to affect the fact that like it will grow more and you might have to go and get regular haircuts that, that's something that you didn't actually see in skyrim uh which was a feature in like before which was hair length so you'd actually pick a style and then change the length. Mm. And like, I mean, you could start the game with short hair and then like, cause that, that ability to have length as like a system in the game then makes sense with the hair cutting system yeah. because it would just fulfill that kind of slider and bar. It, and there are, there are cool story things to it. Like uh, this happens in, in Kenshi, but if you, if you get kidnapped by slavers, like they shave your head. <laughs> and then they like take you off, but it's like it's kind of a cool thing. It's part of your story. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if like yeah. you're yeah. a to, priest, kind of cleric character, you can get like a tonsure. You can just have like, <laughs> yeah, a tonsure. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but like th- that kind of stuff is cool. Like physical. Look, people like physical reflections of your like character's growth and so on. So it wouldn't be bad if they had opportunities for some aesthetic things. But I think the important thing is that we you would still want people to have a lot of control over their character because i tell you what i never felt worse than when i had this like um this bosma character and uh she became a vampire and she looked so ugly after the fact like oblivion characters already look ugly but then you you make him a vampire the skin tone was really bothered me because the rest of her was kind of tan but then it was like these like pale blotchy like 
gaunt mm. section just here and then here it goes tan again and then and then they kind of look like they've got the five o'clock shadow on like yeah like a, and then like a dark goatee and the worst part was because i was playing on 360 and like no xbox live so no like uh internet connected um i had the vampire glitch problem and i couldn't <laughs> cure it so it's like my character's just ruined which one where you have all the ingredients and they're and still asking you to get blood grass yeah, that or something oh so i was just brutal. stuck with this munted character and i was so <laughs> pissed <laughs> And it was just like, oh, man. <laughs> so I wouldn't want that. It's like, oh, well, you know, now you're Megamind because you got a hundred intelligence. And now I'm like, I don't want to be, please. Intelligence is a curse. <laughs> Get rid of it. <laughs> like, yeah, I-, I know what you mean. You know. Or even if you just wanted to role play characters that um, are misleading in how they look. Because sometimes that's cool. Like, mm. oh, this character doesn't look particularly strong, but he is. Yeah. You know, like things like that but i guess we could move on to some more radical ideas if you two have any suggestions i know drew you've got lots i've, I've got lots but i think the rest they can be fairly quick fire because they're a bit hey we, we should radical. actually do probably two podcasts for this like i can imagine a more radical idea i only spent like yeah i spent like so five many. minutes writing down some ideas and, and there's already too many but like i mean one which I think we could only really justify having a conversation about this if we acknowledge that it would probably go in a survival mode rather than in the base game. Uh-huh. I was thinking like one of the major things about Souls games and then you've got like your roguelikes and roguelite, roguelites that have really kicked off is how about having some kind of... Uh, something to make you cautious when you're adventuring. So say you die to a group of bandits... They loot you, you lose money or gear, and you need to go and reclaim it if you want that gear back. How do you feel about that idea? So, but if you die, but like, as in like, why wouldn't people just like load last save? Or do you mean like baking a system So I guess making a system where instead of reloading last save, I mean, you can technically, I guess, load saves, but if you were maybe in a survival mode, your only way of saving is at a rest point or something, or if you die, you return to the last place you rested. I guess my thoughts on it, like, I mean, obviously I'm happy without it, <laughs> but my, my general thoughts on it is considering the trade-off of like, okay, what does that really add to an Elder Scrolls experience? So you have to think like, is it like if you wanted to make things more difficult or add more uh, survival type elements, you could do that without... Well, doing uh, that he, here's an I alternative is, is like say you come across a highwayman or something or a bandits or people that are like interested in taking your stuff right say if they fight you and you get down to the last bit of health that you can also almost be like forced into like a scene or, like you know like kind of if you were being fed on by a vampire but instead like you're down <laughs> on your on your you're, you're limping or something you would have died in normal circumstances but because it's a bandit or whatever and then they basically knock you out black and then they oh, take, take your, your stuff. stuff and then so then it also can you know oh, who was that? Someone took your stuff. Then you could go find the bandit boss. They're wearing your cool equipment and stuff. And you're like, that's mine. <laughs> or you I, guess, I guess I like your way out of it as well. It... So yeah. say you're down on your knees and you can beg. And if you've got high speech craft, <laughs> then you yeah. get out of the situation. I suppose mm. that sounds way more approachable now after hearing it kind of like a law rationalization. Mm. Although to be fair, I don't know why a bandit would knock you out. Like they're probably the, they would just kill you and take it. Like... There's not a huge. They could, advantage. but I think that would add a bit of fun. Like, obviously, it's no, not it going to happen with like misc objective. Go get your stuff back, and they yeah. have a map marker on it. I wouldn't mind that kind of system in the same way, and that's kind of what's cool about. Um, it happens in Kenshi a lot, but like slavers will come and try and attack you and take you and make you a slave, and you'll have to escape. A similar principle could be um, there. So, for example, even like um, you know, bandits going to take your stuff and leave you or whatever. I don't know if it makes sense there to be slavers in High Rock or Hammerfell or wherever they're going to be. But a similar principle could be even like say a a necromancer or something comes kidnapped imagine getting kidnapped by vampires at night and then now you're like they're taking your stuff but you're in a prison cell and you're like cattle like they're cattle that they're going to use you and Mm. you can you know escape and it does sound like you'd be almost screwed though in some circumstances like for a lot of characters who put it like particularly warriors who don't have magic they put a lot of time and effort into getting like the good gear then this bandit takes like your 
flawless Daedric armor and super enchanted mm. sword, and then he's wielding it, and then you have to go in there with some crap armor you've just bought from a shop and try and kill him. And if he bested you the first time without your good gear, mm. what chance do you uh, have? Maybe, maybe, maybe that it's incentive to get yeah. better. I feel like and so like... long as it's it's obviously <laughs> hardwired into the game that your gear doesn't ever disappear, it will always exist yeah, on that course. character. Then you've always got the motivation to get it, and there's always it's forgiving in that you lose again well you try again in the future and you could the thing yeah. is you could go like go hire some mercenaries to help you because you yeah suck. And like, like stock up on poisons mm. and potions and like really plan it all out as long as there's a map marker on them as well i wouldn't want to have to go and find them but see that would be such a cool that would work well with the dynamic system too in that like if you it would just be a cool player experience like like i was sort of talking about how kenshi when when, when you get your shit packed in sometimes it's actually <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it's actually Technically fun <laughs> when, you, <laughs> when you but but then because it, it creates more a character story like because when you get kicked down in the dirt and the underdog and you come back up and then you reclaim your stuff and you're like, bam, and you're like, yeah. it feels good. Rather than going can... back to your two minutes ago autosave. Yeah, exactly. Thing, you know? So it, it actually makes the failures or the losses part of your story rather than um, just like fail game states or bad states. Like we've talked about this before that we don't like um, generally like the whole idea that you can fail a quest or fail game states is kind of boring because it just means you lose out on more content rather than what we like to focus on is consequences for something so you know you fail to do this so this will happen and now you've got to try and deal with those sets of consequences or basically like a a changing you know there's a fork in the road and you go in a different direction a worse one because you failed but it's actually a direction instead Mm. of just cutting it and yeah a lot of people they like really enjoy this idea like oh my gosh this game great for role playing like outer worlds because you can just fail Mm. a quest and it's like okay but you can also just load back your save Mm. whereas which heaps of people would do that i don't know that many people they say they will i feel like a lot of role-playing people yeah, I mean, us well, right. included as role playing people, but they they say, um, "Oh, I would never reload saves," and it's like, mate, whereas, seventy percent of you do, yeah. you do. It's t- it's tempting. But whereas, if it takes you in a different direction, like a new narrative path, exactly, it's it's you've got incentive to not because you're it, like, "Oh, this is my cool character." It's kind of like playing yeah. a Pokemon Nuzlocke. You know, you lose mm. the best Pokemon in your party. You can just reload the save before you enter that gym, but you're going to have a much more memorable experience if you slog through it and your rat adder is now your lead guy or what it, you yeah, know. Yeah, exactly. That kind of <laughs> that kind of thing happens too. Like, And that's something, uh, that's a good example just in terms of the, the stakes. Higher stakes do improve game experience a lot of times because like, for example, I, um, for whatever reason, I, play, I played in Nuzlocke once, I think it was at Heart Gold and um, I, like my, my best ones died and all that kind of stuff. But basically what happened was a vile plume that I named Lemon became like my goat. <laughs> and then it's like all of a sudden I just was really into vile plume. Like I like have so much appreciation for this like character, like this Pokemon that I would never have otherwise used. And so I guess in a similar way, there's just other there's other narrative potential or, or appreciation. For example, if you get your sick Daedric super sword stolen or whatever and then you have to use some other swords to go and try and get it back you might or do other things you might get a greater appreciation for different things rather than it just being i'm never using it again even just basic things like uh, an appreciation for a certain mercenary that you hired who helped you or you know you perhaps you were never an alchemy character and you thought oh i'm gonna try and make some poisons or something and you're like hey i actually like alchemy and Oh, I'm going to try adding that to my build and I use yeah. that to, like, to ima- help. Imagine you get your stuff stolen, you go hire a mercenary to go back and take it and then that mercenary like, oh, I only hired you because I had to need, you know, had yeah. to get help. But you know what? Come back to my like settlement house thing and now you're going to be a like a knight companion or whatever and then you go and play the story further and further and then he becomes like your second hand mm-hmm. of your like settlement kind of thing. And then that guy... I guess the problem who was- with that... Sorry, is that then he wouldn't be one of the proper like Fallout Four style for, for sure? But they will. Yeah. Fe- they I guess they, they don't even have to be. Like a good example is um is I'll, I'll bring him back to Kenshi again. But like because you have your main character, but then you can have you know other companions and characters, and you can build quite a posse of people. But sometimes there were people that I just got randomly because oh I just need a little bit of help in this area. But then they proved themselves through like combat or other things, and I'm like, man, he's so sick. Like. There was an instance where I had like a guy and he's like, he he's still around since the early days, but he had been 
nearly killed like because i didn't really care about him in particular but he kept on surviving all these instances and he's like lost like a bunch of his limbs which are replaced and all of that kind of stuff but he's such like a hardy cool character that i really appreciate now because of the the stuff that you've gone through with him and like yeah anyway there's lots of um cool potential there but yeah I, I think then i guess there you go the idea of losing your stuff in sort of certain circumstances like not something like dark souls where it's like every death or whatever but just i guess circumstances where that kind of thing can happen to mm -hmm. you i think could mm -hmm. be cool all right what else we have all right well here's a couple of quicker ones then i guess yeah. um like i'm thinking a little bit of shadow of the colossus a little bit of breath of the wild dragon's dogma how about like scalable enemies and environments I guess maybe tied to your agility stats. I guess, I guess it's hard. It's, uh, the only reason it's really hard to conceptualize that at the moment because of what Skyrim feels like now and so like just this and so on, it's so clunky. You would mm. obviously have to have some massive uh, overhaul, suppose, which we'd kind of expect which though will, anyway. Surely, yeah. yeah. But, but I mean, I did, I, I did talk about this in a video once where I talked about the climbing skill. Like, mm. because, I, you know, bringing a climbing skill in it just you have to build the whole game around it you it could be really cool right yeah, yeah and just the way that you know like if you look at a game like assassin's creed movement is or at least it was <laughs> one of the main appeals mm. um whereas in an elder scrolls world you would have to design every city and every even every quest to be climbed in in a way that won't but like for example the fact that you can't just climb over the imperial city wall um, yeah, you know, it does change things. I don't know. What about no, Assassin's Creed Valhalla? Consider that it doesn't really feel much like, well, at least me personally, much like a, it's not the same Assassin kind of games as Make before. Make it first person. But it very now. much, yeah, but perhaps this might just have to be, uh, it could be a reality, but like obviously third person might have to, it allows you to do many more things. I like, we won't go into that too much, yeah. but but the idea is that you would just run over things and you just come across villages. They don't have like lots of like verticality or areas, but the options were available there and so on. But the one thing I guess you could also say to that is like, how many enemies would climbing really apply to? Like like some Shadow of Colossus style mm. thing, like you know some Mayron's Dagon at the end fight or something. But it's kind of like or, or of Oblivion or or I don't know if they have some giant Dune style sandworm kind of thing. But like there are so. few few instances i think it's a lot of work to. for very specific yeah. applicability yeah because you know like in that's shadow of colossus it's essential same way same yeah. way i guess dragon's dogma yeah I, I guess the thing is as well it's like if bethesda could pull it off in a flawless way i wouldn't necessarily be against it i'm not like oh it's terrible i'm just like i feel like a lot of desi design decisions have to revolve around the climbing aspect and i think that a lot of locations can kind of be abused um, like I said, for quests, but even just think of like locations that exist in Skyrim. Imagine you go to Valheim Towers. There's that um, bandit down the bottom who asks you for gold. You say no, you kill them, and then you climb up the wall all the way, just climbing uh, Assassin's Creed style to the top and kill the archer there. It prevents you from having to like experience the actual location like go in maybe there's a trap you have to go around this thing and go up a path that but maybe that spirals just a, around uh, the but like you know the corner and maybe that's just a different experience than on slower and especially if you had it actually as part of like some sort of climbing acrobatic skill or something that mm. you are when you do climb imagine assassin's creed climbing but it's actually slow as hell if you're really low at it and if you're especially or just i think not even accessible like i feel like some surfaces then like valheim towers what i'm thinking it's like like kind of smooth and not easy but they've to got climb. like brick holds and yeah maybe but, but you need to enough. be very skilled like, and also and you can factor in like up. weight of armor and stuff and that could also mm. be a like an advantage and a reason to wear clothes more or, or be yeah. little lighter armored and stuff i'm actually not against the concept in general of having like some sort of like every object is able to be sort of climbed upon a song with varying levels of acrobatic skill and so on because also like things like magic with levitation and stuff like that there are all these things that they take out of like you know say morrowind kind of era stuff like um and you know spring heel boots of spring heel jack kind of vibe stuff that lets you jump super high all of those fun kind of sandbox mechanics um that they've kind of, they kind of strip out to keep you like 
grounded and and um, so on. And I think it's just you can experience things the right way, and you aren't locked out of anything. But some dungeons, for example, like you can't jump your way around caves with traps and stuff like that. If you're literally in a cave that's just mm. like this, you can't. But what about the quests that have like? But they just I wouldn't be. Saying, they would just have to be redesigned. That, that's my point. Is that it's like you, like if you want to have a quest that you know ends at Bard Leap, um, Bard's Leap Summit that a place like that if you want to have that and then that is only accessible once you've made your way through the dungeon and come out a certain door other players would just climb up to the end of a quest but do, but area wouldn't you, and like but wouldn't you say that's a fun that would be a fun experience to be like oh i'm a khajiit <clears throat> acrobat is my character basically as a th as a thiefy kind of thing light mm. as hell armor i avoided this whole fight by like climbing up this mm. this thing and i get there and i steal the thing and like run and the hag raven nearly killed me or whatever yeah i, I get i get the i get the appeal for sure hmm. i guess a lot of um attention to detail then has to go into making sure that some quests aren't just completely abusable or broken or location access and just you know yeah, for it sure gets a bit... there's things to consider but I, I i would you could probably argue that those considerations are worth going into the extra effort to 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 you know now that you've got a new like job to do to make sure everything works and it's not abusable and with then you've got to consider perks too like would it really be worth investing 13 perks into a climbing skill versus but, like but, any other skill with but more for advantage. example if you're a thief and you want to play a thief like that and you can climb up that you know waterfall or whatever and avoid everyone else then it really was a big investment okay. for you because if you got in a fight you're just toast you know like yeah I i'll also say assassin's creed climbing as everyone knows is extremely unrealistic and far-fetched um, yeah, and putting it into an but, Elder Scrolls game could feel a bit. But using when they build too. these towers, there aren't just randomly jutting out stones in convenient or places. Huge all the time. leaps, but there's a lot of handholds. And... Like you can see what I'm what I'm going to say is like obviously there are expert climbers. Like you can even see rock climbers and stuff. It's ridiculous some of the stuff that real yeah, people yeah. can do. If that kind of stuff, like Assassin's Creed kind of stuff, so casually does, if that was like your level eighty to a hundred in the skill, then it makes sense. Otherwise, it can be like a, I'm doing a sort of slow thing to avoid a fight, but oh. I could get shot with an arrow and fall off or other things could happen. Mm. I think it's probably worthwhile going look, look. into like the assassin experience of climbing a tower. And, and you know what? They could, here's another radical thing, but they could like, you know, ropes or like sort of like pick type things or other things to sort of tools to add to it. Whether enemies it be would be using it too. Like that's another thing to consider. Mm. Um, it just, if they have the climbing it, Even things there. just like climbing a tree to navigate or to ambush an enemy or something like that. You know, there are other implementations. Too. Also, look, look. also adds incentive to all of those things like sort of like um, the slow fall spells if they brought them back and stuff. But mm -hmm. also if like fall damage becomes a very real thing if you can climb to high places. You're not just, mm. you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. I, I suppose as I said in the video where I was talking about it, I'm not against it on like an I'd idealistic ideological level mm. it could work i'm more against the opportunity cost of bethesda trying to make it work mm. and so like if i was picking in real life and not just like a made-up wish list i'd be like nah focus on other stuff don't try and yeah. bring back the only thing i guess is just morrowind and stuff like obviously had high acrobatics or levitate or stuff like that and that's but, the the other thing i'd say too is that you can instead of thinking in the way that it changes things if you build it around it like morrowind was in in ways um there were systems like levitating in telvani towers you had to be a good mage to levitate up otherwise you're not getting into the telvani like towers and so on or you could yeah. you know abuse it with so good it's acrobatics. just all very niche i suppose like yeah but like it's definitely hard to apply to skyrim because skyrim's level design was based around its mechanics and if mm. this were a thing in elder scrolls 6 the level design would change as well to fit that i guess but then your argument is is it worth altering level design so drastically for one particular skill i don't i don't but think it's worth it's it, not but i think it's it's cool it's yeah. not just the skill but it also like i was saying is the skill is too is, is the magic as well yeah. and the other other things um the, like yeah. the, the whole levitate slow fall kind but of but like stuff i understand like slow fall is fine but i understand why levitate isn't there Mm. Like it, it makes sense to because well the the, the 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 real big red pill is because they couldn't load um, setting <laughs> so, so they had to like close that. off walls yeah. like if you well, this is all assuming like opened up cities and none mm -hmm. of this like you know yeah, yeah the tech no is totally engine problems and I mean on the topic of the tech one of the very small ones I wrote down is like 
you know now that lighting is better in games and you have like hdr and all of that stuff if you mm. you know depending on your monitor or tv what about something like actual proper realistic lighting so if you go into a cave you have to bring a torch or you have to know candlelight or a specific that, spell that stuff's all right that stuff's all right like i wouldn't want every cave to be like super super pitch black but like maybe caves that definitely... are uninhabited except yeah, by like, animals like, maybe i don't know if it's just because i played on like you know in the living room where like there was sun coming in from the left and then it was like i'm um, whether you know when tvs like they had the like curvature mm-hmm. to it you know the sort of analog tvs or whatever they were called um mm-hmm. and i was playing oblivion then everything the dark caves were really dark for me like it's not the same if i play oblivion on pc now but i just remember it being so dark and i had to use torches and stuff and and mm-hmm. the khajiit night eye was actually really appealing mm. and i would like those things to be like skyrim it's entirely unnecessary like yeah. most of the time. I, I can uh, just just i think we can all agree that like darkening caves like some mods do now like we have some of these mods ourselves is a cool idea mm. but i'm um, on the topic of climbing i was just more things were popping in my head of like issue areas but like imagine skyrim and it's like oh you can't access the college of winterhold and let's assume the entrance test is actually like not silly Mm. oh don't worry i'll just climb it and hop in but if you climb it and then the people would have a reaction to you or something but if you wanted to like you know you're trespassing kind of thing just as you know normal or yeah and then you could have um but it would allow you to be that kind of cool character like i'm gonna steal something from the college of winterhold or or you're going in to assassinate someone or so on i think a lot of it is just is just problems with how skyrim is currently structured but it's ways that it could easily be be remedied i think in most I, I suppose i suppose the and the advantage the argument there is like whether or not it's easy yeah to, i to I, I think for most of skyrim it's pretty easy there's not a lot of places that you really can't go that are high like for example you could argue in skyrim going to the top of dragon's reach in that thing you won't really be stopped or it's very easy to just walking through the doors or something like it's like mm. it's not or like mercer Frey's house when you have to be creative and figure out how to get in in riften you just climb up it would be a low level climb yeah but you could just you just could get in. do something a little bit different there but that's just like one like these are the few examples versus the the benefit of just having it from from a role-playing perspective from a gameplay perspective oh no but and no, the no, ability there's way, to... more. there's way more you have to open up windows have every house have like windows to just hop in and out of like like it is a very like change the whole that's not game, necessarily which i'm not that's, necessarily oh, and that's against. not necessarily true with open windows like it's like you don't have well, there's not that much point in like like imagine you're in rifton and you mm. can climb mm. like what are you going to do just walk on the roofs of the houses like you used to do in oblivion with acrobatics where yeah you're just, like, but if you jumping if, on the top if there's advantages really... getting to the back of verandas or something or able to like yeah. you know get into areas you're not supposed to and obviously it's a thing that but, but you know what i mean around. like imagine doing it in white run like okay i'm climbing on these houses styled like this and yeah of course if if towns and cities look the way they do in skyrim with the same level of of accessibility (laughs) to buildings as skyrim then we just riot anyway i mean you can imagine it in the benefits of it perhaps in like witcher 3's no no um but but even then that's what i just thought of in novigrad there are locations that you cannot go in because they're run by these these gangs and they're very mysterious and if you go in there you'll be um like prevented from doing so but like it's, I, I my argument really is generally if you're not supposed to be in a place and you climb into it well then they should attack you and then like as if you're a trespasser or so on like it's not rather that it should be this secured off sort of yeah of like course. quest section like, i, I think know. it's really it's just like well yeah put consequences for going into places and stealing or like going into places that you shouldn't be or aren't authorized to be but some are like reveal places i know this is with witches specifically but some of those places and set rooms would have very um let's say disturbing sites that you like i would say i I would say will the quest yeah but i would say like even witcher 3 like should benefit from a climbing skill to be honest because a lot of the areas i remember that some of the traversal of the nature and especially in like skelliger and stuff it's just like i would like to be able to climb up some of these rocks on the topic of the witcher 3 the most important thing i think should be in the elder scrolls 6 and i i will die on this hill is they (laughs) should put the elder scrolls legends in game as a thing you can challenge other people to. Elder Scrolls Legends is a mini game, like the card game. It's a mini oh, game in the game right. and you can collect cards and you know, you've know you got serious quests and you can ask for a round of legends. They should canonize oh. it in the game, except maybe you know they, they should need to do change. sell physical cards and I'll buy them. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I need to go to Macca's after this so I can go and get some uh, Pokemon cards. 
<laughs> <It's got laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> this, the, that's the Happy Meal toy at the moment is Pokemon cards. You're kidding. Yeah, get down there. Anyway, sorry, that's irrelevant. But put Elder Scrolls Legends in the game. <laughs> I seriously nice. think it'd be a good mini game. Yeah, I don't know if it fits the in-universe aesthetic enough. Like, like imagine it's like, I, here's my card, Dive Eighth Fear, playing defense <laughs> mode. Like, that's, you know what I mean? It's like... Yeah, yeah, look, it didn't hold up to much scrutiny. I immediately realized why it's probably not a good idea, <laughs> but still. Which yeah. Is yeah, I mean, yeah. Do you, do you two in. have any other radical ideas or do you think we should do another podcast with more radical ideas? The rest of mine Because I think baked, I've, so. I've got enough for a whole other podcast. Is it what, 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 let's hear just one more. Like what's another half-baked? Oh, what, what, another one we kind of did get on it, but I was thinking like, you know, games like Valheim where you've got like um, chopping down trees, kind of environment manipulation. Would you want anything like that? And the realistic... See, I, I, you know, a lot of these functions too, like for example, it's kind of somewhat related to, to the acro, acrobatics and, and stuff like that is that if you're going with you and you build environment very, environment very specifically, like you, you kind of got to keep in mind like the things that they can do. If you can just break down a wall and then you can enter the room, it adds all of the same problems as, as acrobatics potentially could or levitate or something like that. It's like you can literally <laughs> break down a wall or a door or something you're not supposed to be in or something like that and access something you're not supposed to. But so I think it doesn't... do that for role But I think it doesn't have the same benefit to the role playing. Like there are entire character archetypes that you can play with acrobatics and, and, and levitate and, and climbing and stuff that you cannot... That just being simply able to destroy a door or something it, like it, that. It, it be, limits yeah. role playing for other, other classes anyway. Like for example, instead of lock picking open a chest you just smash it to pieces like but and, and get the but maybe stuff if you have very it. high strength like we just talked about acro say you're an acrobatic build your yeah. way of getting from a to b you can use acrobatics say you're a mage yeah. you can use levitate warriors are kind of screwed but if they the can way, just smash the door down well i would say if you even had something like that it would almost be like a you know you press if you go up to the door and it's press A to open and it's a lock or something, but it's like hold A to smash or something yeah. like that. If you're like kind of like, it, it gives you a, if right. you've got enough of the skill or whatever. Uh, a small amount is okay, particularly if it's restricted to player activity only. But I guess the difference between um, like even Skyrim versus Morrowind is that the NPCs and the world in general becomes more radiant. So a great example is in Skyrim, you have dragons who fly around and mm. they can even kill NPCs in towns. So imagine you are at a bandit fort and to get across to where you need to go for a quest, there's like a, a, a wooden bridge that you have to walk along. Mm. Dragon flies past, fire breath burns it to a crisp, you can't get there anymore. Like it, it becomes difficult if everything is super destructible. Like I can understand some basic stuff like door breaching and that can be fine. Um, but if everything can just be blown to smithereens, it's kind of it like gets complex. Also, like, what if you just raise a city to the ground? Like, do they rebuild? Like, how does that all work? It yeah. can get tricky when other NPCs, or even forget dragons, but a mage casts a fireball at you and it misses, but it ruins some structure behind you that you need to walk across, or a you know, like yeah, it, it gets tricky. I think it's the one I'm least um thinking, but I'm also for things like. I'm 100% for, for example, it, it's kind of one of those things that they're like, uh, it's not the most immersive, but like if you like fires that you can like spread or something or grass or something, and then it might look temporarily that that, that grass is burnt and all, or, or the, or the shack structure, the fire has gone over and it's all like blackened and stuff. But if you come back, like, you know, a few days later, it's fine, but it's kind of like, I feel like that would improve the immersion of people in the moment. And also if, if you would, Assassin's Creed Valhalla is, is a kind of, an exa comparable example in the way that there is destructive destruction for things like barrels and like fences and some things around that's almost just like the clutter to sort of add to the visual sort of immersion and chaos of the of the war mm. scene but it's not actually like you're not burning down wessex physically yeah like. it's like the equivalent of essential npcs and non-essential npcs but in terms of environment yeah 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 and that, that's a possibility and I'm, I'm sure you know what too like this is the other thing like this discussion can potentially be many episodes for many years because like once Starfield comes out in you know next year supposedly um, we'll have um, 
we'll have more insights about Bethesda's sort of direction of game design and stuff as well. And For sure. Because that's the thing as well. Like, I look back at some of uh, the older videos we made about Elder Scrolls Six ideas, and they were made in a time where you think Elder Scrolls Six could be coming out kind of soon or, like, mm. you know, not as far away as it seems now, at least. 100- and so you're not expecting them to make the tech leaps that they exactly. will yeah. kind of be expected to make by the time it really comes out. So some of the more far-fetched ideas actually seem much more plausible in 2021 than they did in even 2018 or 2019. Before 2018, when they announced ES6 um, and everything and so on, I, I was expecting ES6 to be like kind of 2019, 2020 kind of thing, like that we were actually going to get like yeah. another main Elder Scrolls release. That and it's like, sense. it's going it's to be... Been- Oh, more than 10 years well yet. it's crazy it's gonna it's gonna be like 14 kind of years or something probably right we'll, we'll see 13 14 years since skyrim to, <laughs> to so it's it's gonna be a while <laughs> but yeah I, I think that's uh we can wrap, wrap it, up, it up wrap it up for this one but um yeah we like to just do some of these fun elder scrolls 6 discussions let us know what you guys think down below and maybe even like throw down some suggestions or like radical ideas radical like like, yeah discuss the 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 classic there's no stupid questions but like that attitude just put all kinds of stuff down there and we can do other Mm. episodes like this one if you liked it if you didn't like it let us know (laughs) (laughs) just give it if you didn't like it just give the video a like all all, all comments boost uh the video supposedly who really knows how the algorithm works but uh yeah Thank you for watching. Social media links are in the description as is a link to our merch and our Patreon if you want to help support the channel. Uh, You can subscribe if you haven't already, although I assume if you're listening at this stage, you probably have. And we all look forward to nerding out with you again very soon.